Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects plugin tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to specifically choose which pixels are affected inside of your plugin. Now, last time we created this vibrancy plugin in the coding challenge I did where it basically converts uh, your images into sort of a vibrance or tint effect. And what we're going to be going over today is how we can section out a specific area of our image and only apply the effects there. And then you can basically partition your image off in different sections and apply different effects in these different boxes. This is going to be a fairly simple tutorial and if you already don't know how plugins work make sure you check out our videos on how to create plugins. We're going to be going inside of the basic iterate functions that are built in that go pixel by pixel and check for something and we're going to be using some basic math in order to isolate part of our image and apply different effects to different parts of our image. Before we get started with this video I do want to remind you down below Hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the vibrancy code, uh, test it out for yourself, and make these modifications to see how it works for yourself. Make sure you follow us there on GitHub for coding updates, and in the description, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, and much more, and join with our awesome members and VIPs, which we currently have nine of. Shout out to Oren Awesome, who asks a lot of great questions lately and is exploring all types of extensions and plugins. And if you want to help support us financially and get cool perks at the same time, link will be in the description to become a channel member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP on YouTube, where you can get cool perks and again, support us. So once again, we're just going to be basically taking an existing plugin, which you can check out on the GitHub, and we're going to be, instead of applying the entire image tint here, we're going to section off part of our image and choose the very specific X and Y that we're going to affect. So if I open up Visual Studio Code, I'm gonna be inside my vibrancy.cpp file, and I'll just zoom in here a little bit so it's easier to see. And if I go ahead and stop this link in After Effects, Let's review how this plugin exactly works. I'm actually first going to strip out everything here that I have added in. So that way, let's actually go ahead and view the plugin as it should be in the first place. So just as a reminder here, this plugin works for eight and 16 bits per channel. And when we apply it, we need to go to a fresh frame that hasn't been cached. You can see our entire image is tinted, uh, whatever color we select. And what we're basically again going to be doing is just using the code that is already existing in this and choosing a very specific area of the image, which we can actually choose multiple areas and say make one of them pure white or black, just to illustrate how it works. So inside of the code here, we're going to stop that. And we're looking now, we have a render function. And remember, our render function looks at if our uh, plugin or our layer is 8 bits per channel or 16 bits per channel. Uh, tutorial for smart effects and 32 bit float will be coming soon. And basically, we have our tint 16 and our tint 8 functions. We also have a gamma function, but that's really simple and doesn't affect it much. Uh, but if we go into tint function 8, we can go down here to tint function 8, and inside of here, all we're doing is we're first saying is our alpha greater than 0 of our image. If it is, we want to apply some modifications. These are just checking what color channels are important. We already went over that in the coding challenge video. But this is being basically, this code chunk right here is being applied to all of our image. Now, if we want to choose a very specific part of our image, we want to apply this set of rules to here, which is basically just applying our tint. Uh, it looks at the important channel based on the color they select in the, in the color box and then it increases that color effect on the layer itself. So if we want to apply this to a very specific range, how do we do that? Well first we're going to enclose everything in an if statement. We're going to be checking if certain x and y values or mathematics are met. If we go to the very top of our function definition here, we have two arguments called xl and yl. These are basically just our X and Y. Uh, the L is for long because these are 
long type numbers, but the X and the Y is going to be the current X and Y we're looking at. If we go back to the other section uh, where our tint function is called, we're using what's called the iterate suite. This will go pixel by pixel starting from zero, zero, and go row by row basically, applying this set of rules defined in this function to all of the pixels on our image. Now, since we don't want to apply it to all the pixels in our image, we're going to set up a simple rule inside of here based on our X and L. As an illustration, take a look at this graph right here. This is representative of our After Effects composition. We have the origin point at 0, 0 in the top left corner, and the bottom right is the the full width and height of our composition. What this tint function is doing is looking at each of the pixels line by line, and it's saying, hey, the user selected this blue color, they want to tint it. So add some blue tints to each of these pixels as we go over it. But what we, what we want to do is cordon off a section, say between 2000 and 2500 pixels of our image on the x-axis, and 1,000 pixels and 1,500 pixels on the y-axis. What this effectively will do will say only this section of our, of our layer or our composition will be affected. So since we have the x and y values being brought in, all we need to do is say if x, l, our, our long called x, is greater than or equal to, you can use as well, and since our footage is 4K, I chose to go with like 2000. And we're going to say, and if XL is less than or equal to, say, 2500. So if the value of our pixel, the X value of that pixel, is greater than 2000 on the X axis and it's less than 2500, then apply these rules. And we're also going to set an else. And if it's not, Let's make the output pixel white. So I'll say out P red, and this is 8 bits per channel, so we're going to say 255, and we're going to do this for each of our channels, R, G, B, and then alpha. So what this is saying is if our pixel is between 2000 and 2500 on the x-axis, apply these tint rules. If it's not, make it white. So if I go ahead and run this, uh, let's see how it works. And just so we remember, this is inside of our tint8 function. So when we test this, we'll want to make sure we're in 8 bits per channel. And when I go ahead and go to a fresh frame here and apply my vibrancy effect, you can see we have this very specific section cordoned off. And if we look here at the info palette, the X coordinate starts at 2000 and it goes all the way to 2500. And everything else, as we chose, is going to be white. So now we can get more specific on the Y axis and crunch this down into a more specific area. 2000 seems a bit intense, so let's bring it down to, let's say between 1000 and 2,500. So go in here and say, well, let's actually go with maybe 1,200, 2,300. Now we can choose something on the X axis we want to specifically choose as that part of our image. Let's start here at maybe 500 and end at 2,000. So the way we're gonna add this is just by adding two more ands. We're gonna say and our YL is greater than or equal to, I already forgot what I decided, 500, if it's greater than 500, and our Y pixel value is less than 1500, then we want to use that section to apply our tint, otherwise make it white. So now if we go ahead and apply this to our layer, you can see now we have our very specific section here with those values applied. Now, as you can imagine, you can go off and create tons of different little sections that do different things. You can create a split screen effect with different effects in each little box. You could do a huge number of different things. And I just wanted to sort of give you the basic knowledge uh, when you're scratching the surface and how to achieve this. You could definitely go in and make this an automated process where it automatically uh, sets up these box bounds based on the X and Y minimum and the upper bounds and essentially create your own algorithm to do this automatically. But I wanted to show you the basics of how that could work. And uh, if we wanna make this more practical, instead of making everything else white, 
we could just make everything be the original pixel and uh, and then the next step would be to copy this from our 8 bits per channel function and we'd also want to make this uh, apply to our 16 bits per channel function the x and y values should remain the same and you could even make this based on say like a slider value or something so if the user changes uh, a slider value it will also change the position of where the effect is taking place or the bounds of that effect. The possibilities are really quite endless. It's just sort of learning this basic step of uh, understanding how to affect specific pixels based on some if statements or other math. So now if I try this in 16 bits per channel and apply my effect, you can see we have a nice uh, section here with the effect. Everything else is sort of the original. And uh, it also works if we just start modifying things. It's a little slow to refresh. But as you can see, it is now applying in that very specific pixel range we defined. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the Vibrancy plugin code in the GitHub link. Try it out for yourself and try to follow along with this tutorial if you want to learn. Make sure you follow us there for coding updates. And in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you want to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, link in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone, we'll see you next time.